Hi everyone, welcome back to Hoopsa. Apologies for the slight delay to this upload. I was away in Munich over the weekend. Now if you thought it was cold in Preston, it was minus 13 degrees in Munich yesterday, which meant I sat in the plane on the tarmac, waiting for the plane to be de-iced before it could take off. Anyway, what a week for this football club. Marty Fuentes has well and truly lifted the mood around QPR, with our first back-to-back -back wins since Burnley and Stoke away at the end of last season. We backed up that fantastic home result against Stoke so let's chat about Preston away. Now before the match I chatted to Ollie Dawes of Deepdale Digest to get a sense of Preston's season so far and it's been a bit of a mixed bag really. They went eight unbeaten at the start of the season but since then they've won just two of the following ten games. It shows you how bizarre the championship really is because going into this game that poor run had left them in seventh place just two points from the playoffs. The international break had done little to stop the rot with a 2-1 loss at home to Cardiff and a 4-0 bludgeon away at Middlesbrough in the week. Now the hope obviously for QPR was that the 4-2 win at home to Stoke will have buoyed everyone, the fans, the players and Marty Fuentes. Not only had we won our first championship match in 13 league games, but we'd also overturned several hoodoos in the process. Until Tuesday it had been just one win at Loftus Road in over a year. It was the first time we'd scored two goals in a home game since October 2022. There was three goals at the loft end, a first Chris Willett goal in more than a year, even Lyndon Dyke scored two for Christ's sake. A player of course that had been frustrating many and produced the perfect response to those criticisms. It really was more than just a win and of course we're all hoping that this will be a turning point for our season. Now after a very much collective team performance on Tuesday night, including the substitutions, the question was who would be starting this cold away fixture. And understandably being our third game in six days, Marty opted to make four changes to the starting 11. Now there are a couple of surprises here. Jay Clark Salter, a very welcome addition after his brilliant sub appearance the other night, actually came in for Steve Cook rather than Jimmy Dunn, which did surprise me, and Dunn of course retained his place. Cook was on the bench, so this seems more about managing fitness than anything. Reggie Cannon, who also came on as a sub on Tuesday night, came in for Kakai. Dizel took the place of Dixon Bonner. And most interestingly, Chris Willock took the place of Elias Chair. That was probably the most eyebrow raising choice given Chair's importance in this team. But after some excellent in-game management against Stoke, you just had to to trust Marty. Now from what I've seen, the travelling R supporters were treated to a very stodgy first half in pretty much Baltic conditions, typical as usual that Sky would pick a boring game. Both teams had very few efforts in that first 45. Begovic saved an early chance from Ched Evans who couldn't quite catch the ball sweetly and Willock produced our only shot of the half. He's looking more and more like himself, he managed to turn the defender and rattle a low bouncing shot wide. Not a bad idea on this pretty icy pitch, but it was our only effort. Now he's coming for criticism before this game, but it does seem that without chair, this midfield lacks creativity. Preston also had 61% of the ball in the first half, which I'm sure Sofuentes wouldn't have been very pleased with. He does like to keep the ball, but nil-nil at halftime meant we were still very much in this match. Jack Colback made way for Elias Chair at the start of the second half. Did seem to pick up a minor knock towards the end of the first, but I think this was a purely tactical decision. And it's one that would be rewarded just 10 minutes into the second half. The move started with a lovely ball out of our own half from Andre Dazelle, who picked out Kenneth Powell, who was hiding amongst the Preston backline. Powell would shuffle the ball along to Chair, who cut the ball in outside the box and unleashed an absolutely delicious curling ball to the back post, which was to be met by a gambling Paul Smith. His late run and touch to the ball beat both the defense and the keeper and with that we got Paul Smith's first goal of his second tenure at QPR and his first in a hoop shirt for five years and 235 days according to Jack Supple. It's just an excellent excellent goal all round. You've got that brilliant distribution from Dazelle in the middle of the park, that outrageous whipped ball from chair and a fantastic run in behind from Paul Smith. Delivery into the box has not been our forte in a long time and this really must have just come from putting the time in on the training ground and to be honest from the goal onwards it was a remarkably dominant half for Rangers. We rectified that lack of possession in the first, we dominated the ball and the efforts from then onwards. Chair himself was pretty much running the show, but the thing that was great to see for me was these triangles between Chair, Willock and Powell returning once again. Preston did have a strong chance to equalise on the break, but Frocchio couldn't get his shot on target. Now there's a couple of other things worth noting. Firstly, while Dykes didn't get on the score sheet on Friday night, his hold up play looks much, much improved. He's shielding the ball well, he's distributing short passes out to the midfield bringing them into the game and admittedly that's something that I was really doubtful that he would be able to do in this kind of system 
Those elements of his game look much improved in the last two QPR matches, and I really genuinely hope we see more of that to come in the next few games. Another thing is that we seem to have players queuing up to take shots at points. Dizel, Chair, and substitute Dixon Bonner all had long range efforts from outside the box all parried away by the keeper. And it seems to me, simply put, that Marty has given them permission and license to actually take shots. We all know that the midfielders need to be contributing to the goals. We don't have enough strikers to carry the team by itself. So I'm really pleased to see that we're having efforts on goal. So I'm really pleased to see that we're having efforts on goal from a range of players. And the cherry on top here is that for the second time in a row, we managed to score more than one goal. And amazingly, it was Ziad Lakesh, once again deployed as a sub in this new midfield role, who for the second time in a row would instigate a goal from the bench. He took a cross pitch ball down onto his left foot and quickly slotted it through to Chair, who was waiting in between the defenders just on the edge of the box. Now Chair brilliantly spun his body before he received the ball to allow it to roll into the box and he then drove it across the ground with his left foot for it to be nicely tucked away by Chris Willock causing what I imagine was pandemonium for the excellent travelling QPR fans. Two assists from Chair from the bench, two goals for Chris Willock in two consecutive games and yet again goals created as a result of Marty's in-game substitutions. He finished 2-0 capping off six points in a week. Now what an excellent result and one that was made even more important by Rotherham, Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield all picking up points. After two dramatically improved performances, things are looking a lot brighter for QPR. Sifuentes has picked up eight points from his first five games, the first QPR manager to do so since Neil Warnock in 2010. And he's doing the previously unthinkable to be honest. He's getting a goalless side to start scoring again. He's not only finding a starting 11 that works well, but he's also making brilliant game-changing substitutions that's utilising the bench too. And simply put, he's doing what Gareth Ainsworth made look pretty much impossible and he's giving me hope that we can turn this dire situation around. Now of course some people have said that Stoke and Preston are poor sides. It's a valid point but we've been losing to both sides good and bad this season so it really doesn't matter. Now Hull on Saturday will be a real test of how far we've come in just a few weeks but I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that I'm confident that this team can produce a result now. For the first time in a long time I'm excited about this team, I'm excited about where Marty can take us. We're still going to need to strengthen that squad in January but I'm really happy to see us getting quality out of players that we know can do it. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what you think in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video please subscribe, it's a massive massive help to me. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.